the famous is making bold, aka Tom the V Gook Saram. And one question that I do get very often is you guys who want to visit Korea are always asking me for tips for visiting Korea. So I thought why not make another instructional video where I just give you five tips that I think are good to have if you're traveling to Korea. So let's start. So the very very first one is one that I learned the hard way. Even though I wasn't coming to Korea to visit, I was coming to Korea to live when I got off the plane. I walked with all of my luggage dragging it along and then I walk up to some taxi men and the taxi was like oh I'll give you a ride in the taxi where are you going oh here's the address I showed him so he put all my bags into the taxi and it was kind of like a van looking taxi because I had a lot of bags and then we got to the destination and he was like 80,000 won Excuse me, sir. Seventy-five dollars for a taxi. Well, apparently the airport airport taxis are hella expensive and run you a lot of money. So if you are coming to Korea, do not take the airport taxis because they are ridiculously overpriced. Other ways of transportation are definitely there. Don't be like me and waste your seventy-five hard on dollars for a taxi when you can spend two dollars and take the subway. Okay. So Korea's public transportation is really really good you come here you do not need a car at all which is why I've been here for almost five years and I haven't even thought about buying a car before so the good thing about Korea is the airports are connected to the subway stations and there's a beautiful line called the airport line the Kungan Seoldo I think that's what they call it and it is a little bit more expensive than the regular subway by like an extra I don't know less than a dollar more expensive and it is a beautiful thing but in Korea, in order to take the subway, there are a couple things you can do. The first thing is you can go to the subway station, go to the machine, type in where you want to go and get a one-time use card ticket thing, which is really annoying. Like why? I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't want to do that. And it's just for one-time use and every time you go, you have to punch in where you want to go, etc. That's ridiculous. So the second tip is to get a T-Money card. Like at the airport, there will usually be you know some type of like convenience store something you can go and get yourself a tea money card actually they're not all called tea money cards but i call them tea money cards because most of them are tea money cards there's also like cash b or something like that i think they're different and they have cute ones look what i got i got a lion friends one but the lion friends one are a little bit more expensive so this card is four thousand won which is like three dollars and something us dollars and so what you do is you charge it up, you put money on it, and it goes for buses, subway, and taxis, and if you want to go to the convenience store and like buy stuff. There was one time when I left my wallet at home, but luckily I had my transit card, so I wanted to get some water from the convenience store. You go to the convenience store, boop, you scan it. And some of the cards actually, you can use them to buy several things at several places. It just depends on the type of card. The only thing is these cards, you can only buy them or you can only charge them with cash. So when you go to the convenience store, you use your card to buy the card, and then you use your cash to fill it up, fill her up. And the thing is, you don't need that much money to travel around Korea. Like, because each subway, when you take the subway, it's less than 2,000 won. It's like 1,300 or 1,400 won. And plus, if you get, like, if you need to take the train and a bus, you get a discount when you transfer which is awesome. You go get this T-Money card and you just, yes, yes. This is your lifesaver. Why is mine still in the packet? I don't know. I'm that person who keeps everything in the packet. I leave plastic on everything too. So once you've landed and you've gotten yourself your T-Money card, then you've got options. So there's the airport limousine, the airport buses. Now the airport buses are kind of expensive. Back when I lived in far, far away, like the airport is over here and I lived as far away from the airport in Seoul as I possibly, well, on the Seoul subway line as I possibly could. And taking a bus from Pyeongtaek directly to the airport was only like 14, 15,000 won, which is still significantly cheaper than a taxi, even a regular taxi. If I had taken a regular taxi from there to the airport, it would have costed quite a, a lot still. And there's a schedule, so if you go online to the, I'll send the website to you. You can find out all the locations that the airport line bus goes to. It's super comfortable too, like the seats are big and like comfy and you just lay back. You can even prop your feet up in those seats and just nap. And then wake up and 
you're there. But the subway will always be faster, so if you're in a rush, the subway will always be faster from the airport, in my opinion. Okay, the next one is use Airbnb. Like, there are so many good Airbnb places you can stay, and like, especially if you come with a group of friends, there are some like nice apartments you can rent, especially around like the Hapjong area. Like, Hapjong is close to Hongdae. Like that area, they have some of the best like Airbnb places to rent. One of my favorite guest house to stay at is called IS at K. Um, I don't know, that place is just really chill. And plus, especially if you're coming alone, you should go to a guest house because there's a lot of people there that share the common areas so you can meet friends so you don't be lonely no more. And here's a tip, if you do stay in an Airbnb and let's say, because Korean doors all have electronic keypads, you put your thumb in and it goes and then you type in the stuff and then it doo -doo 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 sings and opens the door. However, they're all battery powered and sometimes those batteries run out. I mean, it takes over a year for your batteries to run out, literally over a year. So you don't have to worry about it that much, but there are times when it could happen. Before those electronic doors, if the battery runs out, all you have to do is take a nine volt battery because there's always a little spot on the side that has two little metal divots and you put that nine volt battery there and it'll give it enough power and you type in the code and then it'll open the door and then you go in and you promptly change the batteries inside. So now, you're probably like, but how do I take the subway, Megan? What kind of apps do I need for the subway? Well, I will tell you about the subway app. Why did it change yellow? This is the thing I don't understand. Does anybody know why my iPhone battery changed yellow? Right there, this right here, Subway, it's just called Subway. It used to be called just in Korean, Subway is Chiatol, Chiatol. And so it used to be called Chiatol in English, J-I-A-C-H-U-L. But I guess they feel, realize that there are so many foreigners here that would need it in English. Even though there is an option to change it in English or Korean, I highly recommend that you keep it in Korean. And the reason being is because for example, there are certain subway stops that are very similar to C in English. So for example, the biggest example and you <laughs> is Shincheon. It's one called Shincheon, it's way over there. One is called Shincheon, way over there. Now when you write it in English, if you're showing Korean person in English, they're gonna see S-I-N-C-H-O-N they might think that it's that one or that one. Like, it's no way to know. But if it's written in Korean, everybody knows Shincheon, Shincheon, because one is written like U, one is written like A. Ah. So I've had a case where some of my friends who didn't speak Korean, even to me, were like, oh, Megan, we're meeting at Shincheon, like with their American accent, Shincheon. I was like, Shincheon or Shincheon? They're like, oh, it's Shincheon. I was like, oh, okay. I go all the way to Shincheon. It's not there. It was Shincheon. And I was like, guys, guys, guys. If this is you and you're watching, I'm not throwing shade at you. You know I love y'all. Hey, loves. But Hangul is not very difficult to learn at all. You can literally learn it the day before you come to Korea because there's only like 47 letters and you just form them together to make words. And even if you don't, if you can read a lot of Korean words but you don't know the meaning, that's fine because the names of places and the names of like streets and stuff like that don't really have meaning. You just need to know what something is and you need to be able to show a Korean person something. You need to be able to pronounce it correctly because there are several places that sound very, very similar if you were to pronounce them with English accent, not just Shincheon and Shincheon, but other places as well too. So please learn Hangul so you can at least can read like the subway map and the good thing about this app is So let me just choose like a very simple two from Hongdae. So if you're in Hongdae And you want to get to I don't know, This is a very like easy one you guys could probably tell it tells you exactly how many minutes So it tells you when the next trains are coming going in your direction and it tells you all the trains that are coming and the direction they're going in. And it is hella accurate. There are also several other apps that I think are really useful for Korean life. I can make another video about it later. The final tip that you need to know is that subways close 
very early it is the most frustrating thing i tell you because korea is such a nighttime country like if you go to a work dinner it might start at like 9 p.m and you know what there's like icha like you don't just eat like once so you eat at one place and then you go to another place and have drinks and eat until like super duper late at night so you'd think ah oh, the subway is probably 24 hours but it's not on the weekends it closed even earlier than the weekdays which to me is like ah oh, it doesn't make sense you think it'd be opposite so like during the weekends certain subways end at 11 or 12 that is hella early so if you're going out what people do when they go to clubs and stuff we have this thing in korea called jimjirbang jimjirbang are um uh public saunas and they're open 24 hours and you can sleep there so if you go to the sauna like you know I don't know 1 a.m. 2 a.m. you shower they give you pajamas they give you like blanket and a mat to sleep on there's like food there you sleep overnight there wake up in the morning you shower brush your teeth again and get on the subway so most people when they go to the clubs go to certain spas so there's a really popular spa called Dragon Hill Spa and it's like sits up on a hill and that is like one of the most like popular spots and they're super cheap too like less than 10 bucks and you can sleep overnight so it's much cheaper than like a hotel or something the only thing is people are hella loud and they'd be like snoring people up in there and one time i was at a gym jobang it was like 4 a.m and one guy everybody was asleep at this point like nobody was talking one guy was snoring so loud like so loud and this one audience she way over there instead of getting up and like poking the guy or something and being like hey why are you so loud he was cussing at the guy from across the room so people didn't even wake up because of the snoring they woke up because he was cussing this man out like ah check it out like this just like yelling and cussing at this guy and we're like bro so I, I honestly, I hate sleeping there. I only sleep there if I absolutely have to and I have to have my headphones in and I have to be listening to music. So that's what people will do. Or if you want to pay extra for a taxi, you can take a taxi. Now the taxi drivers at night, okay, let me tell you about them. They don't run the meter at night. What they will do is they'll ask you, where are you going? And then after they ask you where you're going, they'll offer you a certain amount of money for it, which is always way more than needed. So for example, when I used to live in a place called Anyang, and I'd be like late at night, like out at Hongdae or something, I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm going to Anyang. They'd be like, all right, I'll take you there for 40,000 won, which is like, I don't know, 37 bucks or something, 37 US dollars. And I'd be like, oh no, you did not, because I've taken the taxi there before, and it's only like 20 bucks so you're charging me double basically and i'm like bro what is wrong with you oh no or sometimes you'll get in a taxi at night and tell them where you're going if it's too close they'll say they're not taking you there so then what you have to do is stay somewhere farther away that you know they're going to take the same route to get there and then suddenly be like oh wait wait wait, wait. No, no 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 let me off here i actually i changed my mind and then they'll do it because honestly it's it's crazy like it's brutal trying to get taxis at night especially in Itaewon everyone's trying to take a taxi it'll take you like 20 minutes to get a taxi when you can usually get one in like one minute and then if you get a taxi and you're going too close and they can't make enough money they're like get out even though they're not supposed to those people those taxi drivers not all of them there's some really good taxi drivers I personally know one and he's phenomenal so you need this app called Kakao Taxi which is only available in Korean so you need to learn Korean Kakao Taxi Bam, bam, bam. Okay, so here you ch it knows your location. Oh, no. so let me put it somewhere I'm not, and then I'll show you again. So you type in where you are and then where you want to go, and you choose the type of taxi. So there's a regular taxi, and basically, this app is just like Uber, um, but it's with the actual like taxi driving separate companies and it even has a section for black taxi there's cacao black where they're like they wear like suits and they come like with white gloves and they like open the door for you but like a taxi ride anywhere is going to cost you at least 60 dollars 
So if you have somewhere you want to show up in style in a nice car and you want like a, a driver type person to come out and like open doors for you like you're a princess, then you click on the black option from Kakao Taxi. So anyway, I hope that kind of helped. I just thought, hey, I would just share a few tips and just kind of talk to you a little bit about stuff. I don't know. I don't know if that helped or not. Anyway, if you have any other questions or things you're wondering about life in Korea, then just let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video or like to see more videos, please subscribe to my YouTube page, which is down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, like me on Facebook, and I will see ya.